uh, an art, for example, piano playing or mm -hmm. the martial arts or dancing. Um, they might approach the art in a way that not only do they become extraordinarily focused while they're doing their art, mm -hmm. but that there's a carryover into daily life and they notice month after month, year after year, uh, as the result of having done that art in a certain way, mm -hmm. their base level of focus in daily life has changed. So even though they're not calling it meditation, it is um, de facto a meditation. So if I do that, I don't have to actually do regular meditation. I can just do my if, ballet or piano. Well, yes, but there's a, a, a tricky point because the issue is not do you become extraordinarily focused while you're doing the endeavor. Uh -huh. uh, that's not that uncommon. Uh, what is much less common is that there is a carryover. And you notice in daily life, uh, in other activities, that because of the way you're doing your art, um, <clears throat> that, that every moment of your life is being informed by an elevated sense of focus. That's fairly unusual, but that is Zen and the art of. You may have heard that expression, right. Zen and the art of archery, Zen and the art of uh, flower arranging Is that in tea. the zone too? <laughs> uh, yes and no. No? Uh, it is That's yes in the sense that there is this locker room or sports term to be in the zone. Yeah. And that is uh, the term that's used for uh, entering a state of extraordinary concentration uh, say during your performance of sport. And of course it's highly desirable. Um, the ba baseball player Ted Williams yeah. used to say he knew he was in the zone when he could see the pitch coming at him. He could see the stitches on the ball. And those pitches <laughs> come at like 100 miles an hour, right? So wow. he, they, sports people call that in the zone. Once again, it's not entirely uncommon for somebody to quote enter the zone during their performance. Right. What is uncommon is that they do it in such a way that there's a carryover into daily life. There has to be the carryover. Remember I defined the common denominator of meditation is well not just concentration but your base level of concentration. When you're not trying to be oh, concentrated, what are you like in daily life? Um, to count as meditation, something has to um, uh, consistently elevate your base level of concentration. So anything that does that is a meditation, uh, whether it's called meditation or not. But it's not just a matter of you get concentrated while you do it. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of you, you get concentrated while you do it in a way that it retrains your ordinary uh, perceptions. So that's, what I, that's why I'm very specific about elevate your base level, because it's not uncommon that a person will become extraordinarily focused in some endeavor. It is, however, relatively uncommon that that carry over into daily life in a dramatic way that uh, grows consistently with time. Without special instruction, usually that doesn't happen. They just have it spontaneously, but there's not the so that's why life. you actually do these formal meditation techniques and practices because that more directly well, elevates that base level. Well, yes. The, in other words, let's, we can imagine based on your line of questioning that uh, <clears throat> there could be some ordinary activity you're doing as a meditation. Mm -hmm. And then there could be some special exercises that you do that usually involve sitting still and focusing in some way and whatever. Mm -hmm and you do those. Now in either case, you could have an elevation of your base level of concentration. Right. And that elevation needs to grow dramatically with time. If that's the case, then either of those count as meditation. But usually people that get spontaneously focused, mm -hmm. unless somebody points out to them that it is necessary and possible to carry this over in daily life, they usually don't. So it becomes a dead end and it's not really a meditation, even though they may become very much in the zone while they perform their sport or their art. Um, so in theory, you don't have to do systematic uh, formal exercises that involve sitting and that kind of thing, in theory. But probably, <laughs> but but probably if you want to do it through an art, you uh -huh. probably will still need some coaching into how to 
make your art carry over the state of the zone. Do you zone. do that? Do you coach people how to, to I, turn I the can, art into being yeah, in the Yeah, I zone? can do that. Oh, that's uh, cool. I can coach a person uh, to make their running or their um, singing, uh, what have you. Uh, I can coach them so that they get the carryover. Um, cool. But more typically, um, people will also do formal meditation practice, s sitting in silence and so forth. So the upshot is that the common denominator of every form of meditation around the world, inside or outside of religion, would be that they elevate base level of concentration. 